This is Alex. Uh, we are from Foresight uh, Institute. Uh, thanks for being here today. Um, so, it is not a small endeavor that we are taking on, uh, which is rebuilding the a new infrastructure and a new paradigm for science, especially in the society that we live in. We live in a technology-based society. What we do with science influences literally everything, uh, our politics, our economy, uh, our culture, um, and it's, it's a major part of uh, our, our life and uh, our society. Um, what is more, decentralized uh, science, and this is why it has such a huge potential uh, to have m huge benefits for humanity. Uh, if we make science more open, more inclusive, um, this could uh, really transform uh, our human futures. But it is also the area, we think, in Web3 development that has carries the most risk and the deepest risk. And even uh, risk that we call existential risk, uh, if you know the definition, meaning risk to uh, the, the, the very existence uh, of humanity. Uh, and so we have a big responsibility all in uh, building this new infrastructure. And it's really important to have these risks in mind as we are building uh, a new infrastructure uh, for science. Um, and we are not here to do fear mongering or being like, you know, everything is really dangerous, let's not do it. No, the attitude is to see this, these risks, these potential pitfalls, really hold them into our mind and help each other find solutions, like have a really proactive um, and sort of val make value propositions on them. And that's usually the work that Foresight does. It's been 37 years we have been thinking about the perils and promises of technology in many areas, neurotech, longevity, uh, computing, um, uh, nanotechnology <laughs> and space. Um, so this is what we do. Uh, and today we are gonna talk to you a little bit about, try to, to encourage you to um, map these risks and uh, work together on tackling them. Thank you, Lou. Yeah, it's very important actually to take into account risks and try to troubleshoot uh, those risks while we are building the infrastructure. Because most of the time, and today we can see this, everyone got a solution and this is great. Everyone is building, this is great. Everyone is bootstrapping. But we need to keep in mind why we are building the risk of DSI. So let me just show you, we have very few slides because we are in a workshop style, so you're gonna see. Uh, so, let me just uh, show you this quote from uh, Thomas Kuhn. Thomas Kuhn is not a technologist. Thomas Kuhn is an epistemologist from the 20th century. He said and wrote, the evolution and implementation of science and technology, exactly what we are doing now and here, involve not only cognitive dimension, but also social, economical, and cultural choices in which intervention is possible. Right? So this quote actually help us to see that as we are building the next generation of scientific infrastructure, the risks that need to be taken into account are not only related to cognitive dimension, right? But they're also related to social, economical, cultural, legal also um, layers that are implies in science. So just to start this workshop, which will be very, very short, but just to start it, let us see a few examples of risk that we need to take into account. Uh, the first one, I will title it the DCIDAO access risk. What is this? So it's one thing actually to enroll already scientific literate people to a DCI, right? But it's another thing to expand your DAO and be able actually to greet non-scientifically literate people within your DAO. Because scientific research is so difficult to understand, we need to build infrastructure to allow a greater number of people to join the DAO. Because what is interesting at the end is not to reproduce a DAO with 
our very talented people that we all know and scientific people. What we are trying to do right here is to democratize the science, bring more people into it and work on this self-sovereignty to push forward all the health, the space and all the different science and technology that we can push forward with our DAOs. So, yeah, for instance, if you want to enable a greater part of the population to fund the science and participate into, for instance, IP NFTs, we need to find new way, new infrastructure to actually distribute this knowledge and grow our society interest and literacy about science. Lou has another example of risk to take into account. Yeah, you can think about a reverse access risk, meaning um, precisely having very wide access uh, to extremely powerful science and technology. Um, so just to give you maybe some bright uh, examples, think about uh, having the, um, the, the genetic code of a virus that would create a pandemic in open access with everyone, anyone being able to manufacture it in a decentralized lab. Uh, you could think about DAOs with questionable uh, ethical drives like eugenics um, to take a classic example, right? So as we rebuild a new system, how do we how do we also not lose the wisdom of the of the older system so of course there are many other different risks and i'm pretty sure you all have some risk in your ma mind right so let's take action and let's transform this unconference into a real one so what we suggest is to here you have a QR code if you scan it it will lead you to our DSI community where we are inviting you actually to, after scanning this code, sharing the risk and also sharing maybe the infrastructure you are working on to solve those risks or maybe you have some ideas. So the idea really is to open the conversation and try to mingle together in order to make those risks appealing for everyone and work towards like a better future for science. Yeah, you can think about this as an ongoing workshop on uh, infrastructure risk. So the goal is really, um, you know, when you along the day working on projects on this side, working on your own project, encounter any fear, uncertainty or doubt, uh, you can just post it there and uh, hopefully the community will help you and you may also help the community in exchange if you see that someone um, has uh, you know, so some risk or some uh, question that you might be able to help with. And yeah, and hopefully this should be a collaborative endeavor. Thank you. Thank you. So we already have some questions, actually. Um, so we have one question related to legal risk for DSI, and it's like a big chunk, I would say, for DSI. So uh, someone said, the legal risk, where to find them? Yeah, obviously, I think it's a very good question. And I think we should work on an infrastructure to actually being able to gather uh, all those legal risks and, and work towards them. Maybe the person who wrote that uh, wants to uh, just talk about this a little bit more, but it's okay also to stay in the shadow. You wanted to? Okay, go. Ah. Hi. Um, yeah, so. Everything is new in crypto, and this is super new. So I think we have a challenge as a community to understand it first. And then I cannot think about um, regulators or maybe lawyers that are not used to crypto and to you know, learning so fast, even understanding what this is, where are the challenges. And um, I'm personally working with regulators. They are now looking into how to regulate NFTs. Um, and I think they're not aware of, you know, uh, the potential damage they could do to DSI. Uh, also refi in general, but uh, we're talking here uh, about DSI and I think this is important. Can you, can you elaborate a little bit on the potential damage, for instance, as an example? Yeah. 
So um, there are few, but for example, so I'm coming from Europe and this is very Eurocentric. <laughs> but uh, what's happening is that they are regulating tokens and that means also NFTs. And also there is another risk, which is the AML risk. So basically the worst case scenario is that uh, the being, being compliant is so burdensome and uh, also expensive that many of the projects we see today would not survive or many would not be even um, able to, to produce or to, to start developing their products and their ideas uh, just because of um, them limiting them uh, from the beginning severely. Thank you. And do you have some uh, intuition or, um, <coughs> or, yeah, or input? As, is, does anyone else have a question? Otherwise, I have a follow-up question. No? Do you have any intuition or input as to what we can do as a community um, to help with that? So I think in general is just educating everyone. Uh, but what we are doing is specifically educating regulators. So if anyone wants to talk to us, we're here. Uh, and we're also writing now uh, an article, kind of a research on NFTs in general. Just this morning, I was talking to one of the MPs in the European Parliament, and they very much welcome this piece because they are writing a report at this moment about NFTs, and they're probably going to design uh, the structure of the new NFT regulation. So it's happening very fast, and I think we need to react fast. So we are trying to basically explain to them all the different ways how NFTs can be used. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, if there is, is there any other question, otherwise? I think if someone wants to talk to the MP, you can just wrote in this telegram and maybe Mariana will reply and then uh, you can continue the conversation. Thank you so much. There is also uh, someone uh, saying that, uh, hello, uh, I'm building infrastructure on our wave and Lens protocol to help decentralize knowledge and make archival info more resilient. This is also a big, uh, uh, yeah, a big solution for this risk of like, how do we manage actually to uh, create those silos or not silos actually, the centralized way to actually um, store all the knowledge and uh, make it more uh, resilient. So uh, I think it's super interesting if the person who wrote this would like to continue this conversation. The mic is here, so please write the hands. And uh, we also have uh, someone saying, how do you manage permissions and access control in an open environment to prevent against attack? So that was your point actually also against like, yeah, if we have a virus or anything, we have two minutes, we need to close. But uh, please continue on this Telegram. It's a workshop going on. You can use it during the entire uh, week. You can meet people, share everything. It's here just to have like an online workshop. So thank you very much. We are from Foresight Institute. You can learn more by like just going on internet. Thank you. I'm asking you. Asking you so. <laughs>